Welcome back to the Tigers Den Podcast. Before we get started, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget to hit those links down in the description. Follow your boy on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. It was a frustrating week to be a Tigers fan. An embarrassing loss to the Duke Blue Devils. 77 to 49 was the final. Both defenses were terrible in this game. Both offenses combined for 63 points in the first half, then another 63 in the second. DK1 finished 25 of 40 for 364 yards, one passing touchdown, and three interceptions. But the senior quarterback did rush for four touchdowns. The turnover set Duke up with great field position, and they capitalized off that. On the ground, Tess Carter went over 100 yards for the seventh time this season, but only had one visit to the end zone. Flowers was able to get into the end zone rushing and receiving in this game. I was pleasantly surprised by the wide receivers this week. Clark led the way with seven grabs for 116 yards. Pate finished with five catches for 74. Salmon had five grabs for 85. And Davis caught three passes for 62 yards. Any other week, these stats would be a win, but not this week. The G-Man defense was absolutely non-existent, giving up 167 yards and six touchdowns on the ground and another 392 yards and four touchdowns through the air. Oh, And don't forget about that kickoff return for a touchdown. This game was crazy. Both teams racked up 1,732 total yards. Even though it was a shootout, I was disappointed that I couldn't find a way to stop their offense. It seemed like everything they did worked. We only stopped Duke once on third down. Once. That's unacceptable. And that led to some changes from the G-Men. They have switched to a multiple defense instead of the normal 4-3 base. This is going to allow them to get more speed on the field and better tacklers as well. Also, safety Justin Victorian has won the special teams job. He will be returning punts and kickoffs. So we take a look at the top 10, and the Buckeyes are still sitting at number one, followed by Bama, Virginia Tech, Oklahoma, Washington. Round out your top five. UFC moves up a spot. Auburn jumps up a spot as well. NC State, Florida, Stanford round out your top ten. The recruiting trail we go, and the Tigers are welcoming six recruits to campus, including running back Charles Brooks, QB Ben Smith, and athlete James Heron. But we welcome the newest member to the Elite 18, Juco Safety Brian Smith has signed with Grambling State, and we couldn't be any more happier. Pairing Smith with Bridgewater secondary is going to be an amazing His speed and tackling ability is going to help the G-Men defense out big time. Top of the board, and after that tough loss, our lead has shrunk for Charlie Brooks. Having him on campus this week is really important. Juco corner John Nicholas is close to signing. The final push is on for him. Teaming him with Smith and Bridgewater in the secondary is going to be scary. Juco running back William Higgs still has the G-Men as his top team. We are still battling Army and Syracuse. Our lead continues to grow for Gerald Cox. He would make a great addition to an already decent receiving core. Next week, we'll see where we stand with all these prospects that are visiting, but we have to get ready for Northwestern. The Wildcats come in ranked 25 in the nation and have a 5-3 record on the year. They're coming off a tough loss to Nebraska. 24-19 was the final. And the Wildcats come in a little beat up. Their normal starting quarterback, Clayton Thorson, is down. So that means senior quarterback Matt Alvidi gets the start. He's throwing for 731 yards, six touchdowns, and six interceptions. LV might not be a solid quarterback, but his backfield mate, Justin Jackson, is a stud. The senior running back has rushed for 735 yards and five touchdowns. We have to keep an eye on Alvidi because he does have scrambling ability. Out wide, Alvidi is throwing to a solid wide receiving core led by sophomore Bennett Skorkin. He leads the team with 30 catches for 497 yards and three touchdowns. Jackson is a dangerous receiver out of the backfield with 25 grabs for 341 yards. And Macon Wilson is third on the team with 20 catches for 180 yards and four touchdowns. On defense, outside backer Nate Hall leads the team in tackles with 52. His linebacker mate Brett Walsh is second on the team in tackles and leads the team in sacks. In the secondary, Kincaid has to be aware of safety Godwin Igwabuki roaming around in from his safety position. It's going to be a tough matchup, and it's homecoming and senior day. It's an exciting time on campus. Let's just hope the G men come ready to play. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. Shout out to all the new fan members who have subscribed in the past few days. I appreciate the love, you guys. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. And we'll talk from the hole as our 5 and 3 Tigers look to get bowl eligible against the 5 and 3 Wildcats of Northwestern. 
Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.